I am preaching this sermon from my home and recording on Friday afternoon. After I returned from my vacation, Bree tested positive for COVID and I have many symptoms, no positive test yet. But we felt that it was in the best interest to stay at home and not expose any church members to my symptoms. So I want to thank Consistory for giving me this time off, uh, even though I did just return uh, from about two weeks away uh, one Sunday as well as thanking Lori Hartlieb, uh, who jumped in to lead worship today, and Mr. Brian Gibson, who was able to jump in once again with a quick hymn sing. The scripture for this morning is the parable of the Good Samaritan, which comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to vindicate himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, A man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and took off, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan... While traveling came upon him, and when he he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, treating them with oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you. Our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Well, it was late on Thursday evening that I began writing this sermon. And I was looking out my dining room window when, as I saw the sun cast a beautiful pink hue over the clouds and over the houses in my neighborhood. As the time went on, I then saw the lightning bugs begin to fly out among the leaves of the tree in my front yard, each little bug shining and then extinguishing its light and moving on only to light up again. It was getting darker, and the shadow of a person walked on the sidewalk in front of my house. I didn't see who it was, but I know that it was my neighbor who, I guess, was just out for a stroll, just as the sun was going completely behind the mountains and the trees and the houses, setting down in the west. My neighborhood. Made up of setting suns, Strangers walking in the cool of the night, and lightning bugs shining their beautiful sparkle. My neighborhood. Now I pray that I could paint a picture for you of my neighborhood from Thursday evening. But the question that is before us this morning is not what makes up your neighborhood, but who is your neighbor? The gospel lesson for today comes from our Gospel of Luke and shows us a lawyer who is talking to Jesus. The lawyer begins to ask the question, selfishly, what must I do, I do, to inherit eternal life? Now this lawyer, this man of the law, is asking Jesus to give him the answer to the question about his salvation. This man is worried not about his life on earth or his financial well-being or his concern for the world around him but he is worried about what will happen to him after he dies. As faithful Christians, we have been promised life after death, a new life 
to those who love God. And we know that all of God's children are loved by God. And we have faith that we will be blessed with eternal life. But there is more to today than what happens after this earthly life. Now, the lawyer didn't seem happy with the answer that Jesus gave to him when Jesus asked the lawyer what is written in the law. The lawyer answered, to love God and to love your neighbor. In some ways, this sounds very, very simple, almost too simple. But the lawyer didn't think that this was a good enough answer. Or maybe <clears throat> the lawyer was trying to trick Jesus. The text says that the lawyer was trying to justify himself, so maybe the lawyer wasn't believing in his own answer. So we ask Jesus a different question. Who then is my neighbor? Well, many of you know that my family just returned from a cruise vacation that was planned for 2020 and then got rescheduled for over the past week. One thing that I enjoy about cruises is that the crew and the other passengers um, can really be from all over the world. There are many different languages spoken. There were crew members from many different locations as they were all listed on their name tags. And there were opportunities to have conversations with people from other places. So all of this made me think about this scripture passage. And yes, I was actually thinking about this while on vacation because I knew that this parable of the Good Samaritan was the scripture for this Sunday. And it made me think about the answer to the question of who is my neighbor in a different context. You see, the parable of the Good Samaritan is so familiar, but we know it so well that we don't take the time to really look into the scripture and look, look at it from different angles. This parable has even become its own cliche as anyone who does a good deed is called a Good Samaritan. There are even laws called the Good Samaritan Laws, that if anyone assists someone in need who might be having a medical emergency, or maybe you assist with CPR, if you break a rib of that person you're trying to help, that law will protect you from being sued by the person that you're trying to help. Now, this is different if you are a doctor or a fully trained medical professional, and I would never want you to think that I am giving anyone legal advice in a sermon. But it is interesting how this parable from our scripture has got into the mainline world. So why was I thinking about this parable while among people who are speaking different languages and people who were from other places and other countries? Well, because it made me think about how when I answer the who is my neighbor question, that the answer is more broad than I can fit into a 15 minute sermon. The answer to who is my neighbor is so much more expansive than we think about when we walk down the streets of our own communities. Maybe we're chasing lightning bugs or walking past a community member as the sun sets over the horizon. You know, we struggle when we hear about a shooting in another state where seven more people are killed by a gun and one man. But we think about how it happened there and not here. But those victims and their families, that community that is mourning, they are our neighbors. You know, we struggle when we read about immigrant children being separated from their families, but we think about how they're down at the Mexican border and so maybe that doesn't really affect us. But their lives are important too because they are our neighbors. We struggle when we hear about women of other countries who cannot show their faces in public or they need to always have themselves completely covered and places where women aren't even allowed to drive. But since our women have rights to drive and they can dress as they want, we don't think about these other women very often, but we should because they are our neighbors. 
When I have written this sermon in the past, I probably list the different people in our local communities that are overlooked and the ones where people pass by on the other side of the street because they aren't like us. But the sermon is more than that. The lawyer was really trying to save his own skin and be promised his own eternal life. He was so worried about what happens to him after this life that he neglected to see how he can live in this life. There is more to life than what happens next. There are neighbors out there who, who need our help. There are neighbors out there who sometimes just need to know that we are their neighbors and we care about them and we love them. There are neighbors who are blessings to us and there are neighbors who could be blessings to us if we just took the time to allow them to be welcomed and share in their lives. Their lives, not, not the afterlife or their eternal lives, but their present earthly flesh and blood fellow human being lives. So my friends, don't get caught walking on the other side of the road by thinking about what happens next. Take the time to live in the now. Take the time to be present now. Take the time to watch for sunsets, run after lightning bugs, and walk with and talk with and love those neighbors of yours, all of them, from the family next door to those people halfway around the world. May it be so. Amen.